Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them and replied, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told him, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female, and for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no one must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. When you came in this morning, you received uh, your worship aid, but also an insert. And uh, the insert is today's message, and it is there. Uh, for you to follow along, but also to take it home. And come Wednesday, pull it out and, uh, and keep it, because there are some really important things uh, that are in this handout as I go over it with you. Um, we're going to take a look today at God's vision and purposes for his church. God's vision and purposes for his church. If I were to ask you, what is the purpose of the church? I would get a lot of different answers. And if someone were to ask you, what is the purpose of the church? How would you respond to that question? Growth church expert Lynn Arne interviewed about 10,000 members from nearly 1,000 churches in America. He asked, what is the purpose of your church? 89% of the members said, the purpose of the church is to take care of me, my family, and the other members. Okay? 11% of the respondents said, the purpose of the church is to fulfill the great commission to make disciples and win the world. He then asked the pastors of those very same churches, what is the purpose of the church? And the answers were the exact opposite. 90%, and I'm in that 90%, 90% of the pastors said the purpose of the church is to win the world to Christ and fulfill the Great Commission. And 10% of the pastors said the purpose of the church is to take care of the needs of the members. So we, there's, a, there's a disconnect here. We're not on the same page. And that is precisely the problem. And what we need to do as a church and as a parish, we need to follow God's vision and purpose for his church. To be a purpose-driven church is to get aligned with God's vision and purposes for his church. And so, there are five purposes, and these five purposes are found in the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. The 
great commandment and the great commandment. So let's take a look at the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The first purpose of the church, the first purpose of life is to worship, to love God. And this is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And here we have the second and the fourth purpose of the church. It's to connect. It's membership. It's fellowship. It's coming together as a community. And yes, taking care of the needs of our parish. Absolutely. And it's also to serve, to serve in a ministry. So the whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. And then we have the Great Commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. That is to proclaim the responsibility of all the baptized, to proclaim, to go and make disciples, baptizing them. What does that mean? Because you might think, well, priests, baptize, absolutely. But baptize means we bring people in to the fellowship. We baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We bring them, connect into the fellowship, into the church, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. That is to grow in our faith. So those are the five purposes of the church. The mission, the mission is what we do. So what is our mission? What is our purpose? This is God's purpose. I didn't make this up. The mission is love God, love others. We call it worship and connect, grow, serve, and proclaim. So when you come on the campus, you'll notice our five banners reminding us of the five purposes, God's five purposes for his bride, the church. And that is our purpose. We don't need a 40-word mission statement that most churches do, that no one connects with, reads, or really know what it's all about. But all of us can remember seven words. Love God, love others, grow, serve, proclaim. That is God's vision for his church. That, the, uh, the purposes of the church. And our vision, our vision, why are we here? What's our dream? What's the destination? What's the promised land? Huh? What's our dream? Our dream is to bring people to Jesus and to his church. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. It begins there. We're all believers. We're all belongers. And we want people to be believers and belongers. But here's the question. Are we becoming true disciples of Jesus Christ? Are we becoming true disciples of Jesus Christ? That's the dream, to become true disciples. My dream is that we be a healthy church. Because a purpose-driven church is a healthy church. And this is a good way of understanding that. The human body has nine systems. We have the reproductive system. We have the skeletal system. We have the muscular system. We have the nervous system. We have the immune system. We have, what, the respiratory system, so on and so forth. There's nine systems that make up our body. If one of those systems is not functioning properly, we're not healthy. In the church, there's five systems, the five purposes. And if those five are not functioning, then we do not have church health. All five are important. All five matter. What happens, and I know this because it's been my experience, most parishes are unhealthy. I've been a member of six of them. Okay? And why are they unhealthy? Because they do one or two purposes really well, but they ignore the other three. So some parishes are known for their wonderful weekend experience, but they offer no outreach, you know, no service to the community. Some parishes are known for their outreach and service 
to the community, but when you go and worship, uh, the music is off, you can't see uh, within the range, huh? Uh, the uh, uh, restrooms don't work, there's not paper, there's trash, uh, the homily is ill-prepared, so on and so forth. That's not a healthy church. So a healthy church is when all five systems, all five purposes are up and running. And that is my dream, my dream for our parish. And so, what is our model? Our model here is a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission will grow, will grow a great church. So how are we going to do this? How do we do this? What's the how? Well, we begin with the weekend. The work of the parish is really all about the weekend. The weekend experience is the number one opportunity for people in the community to connect with the church. And almost everyone who actually does come in contact with the parish does so on the weekend. In that brief time, people will decide whether it's worth it to come back or not. If the experience is boring and bad, then they won't. Think about it. If we're getting people back to church, if our goal is to bring people back to church only to remind them of why they stopped going to begin with, we could be doing more harm than good. And unfortunately, if their experience of church is boring and bad, they can come to view the gospel and even God himself in that way too. The weekend experience is the key for reaching unchurched people and getting them into the discipleship path. So here at Corpus Christi, there's four things I look at. And we need work in all four areas. There will always be. The first thing that I take a look at is the environment. Are we a friendly, welcoming, and inviting community? Do people feel at home? when they come and join us for worship. It's that home ministry of hospitality. And then I also take a look at the campus and the facility, the landscape, uh, the restrooms, do they work? HVAC, huh? uh, the sound system, all of that is very important around the weekend experience. And there's always work to do. The second is a solid single, have you ever heard, you know, uh, uh, the sound of a solid single? It's very, it's powerful, and it's music to my ear. A solid single and beyond message. So number two falls on me. The number one issue among unchurched people who have shared their reasons for not committing to church is the preaching is boring and it is not relevant to my role. It is my role to provide a message that is both practical and helpful from the Word of God that will move people closer in relationship with Christ and help them live in the world, real world each and every day. Now, I don't know if I get a, a solid single. I like to think that I do. Uh, I am sure there are times I crash and burn. There are times that I strike out. But Babe Ruth said, don't let the fear of striking out hold you back. Okay? But I will say this. I come prepared. And I will say that every minute is one hour of preparation. So if you want to know how much preparation I put into this Sunday message, uh, now you know. One hour for every minute. So, uh, and I've spent probably about 25 to 30 hours on this message. Now, uh, the message is going to be about 25 minutes. But anyway, uh, so, so, so I bring it, even if I crash and burn, because you deserve the best. 
A worship experience that allows people to enjoy the presence of God. So our music here is contemporary, pleasing, and done in a very professional manner. It is uplifting, and the lyrics of the songs offer hope. And then the fourth thing that we focus in on is children's ministry. So Maria Encion is doing a wonderful job. We have Clo when we send the children out to break open God's word. We also offer a daycare, and like all of this, uh, there's still more work to be done. But our goal on the weekend is to create an environment that is so helpful and attractive that the fish, huh? fishers of men and women, that the fish um, who swim into our net can never leave. Now, the next step are the classes. And you've heard these announcements uh, for a number of months now. And the classes are designed to lead us in our growth and to becoming true disciples of Jesus. Each class is taught on the second Sunday of the month from 1 until 5 p.m. We provide materials and lunch. Each class covers five key topics over the course of the four hours. And each class has a different set of requirements for completion. So you need to take 101 before 201, and 201 before 301, and so on. Okay, so before I get into this, four hours on a Sunday afternoon, I think my faith is worth that. If I go to all four classes, that's 16 hours of my time, I'll put $100 on uh, on the altar, and I'll say this. I was confirmed in February of 1968. Okay, I was in seventh grade. I would say that 90% of those who were confirmed have not looked at a catechism since. Okay? Uh, and, 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 but they would say, I don't need a membership class. I am a member. I know, I know all there is to know about being Catholic. No, you don't. No, you don't. So we all need to get into the membership class. And so the membership class is titled Come and See, Discovering Our Church Family. And that's the second purpose of the church. The weekend experience is the first purpose. Second purpose is connect. So we teach God's five purposes for your life and why you need the church. Overview of the seven sacraments, the creed, and other essentials. And we have a number of speakers. Uh, however, uh, the, um, uh, the hub of Class 101 would be our youth minister, uh, George Vasquez. And he does an outstanding job. Corpus Christi's mission, vision, and strategy. Who we are, Corpus Christi, and the structure of our parish and our four core values. Class 201 is our maturity class titled Following Me, Discovering My Spiritual Maturity. The third purpose of the church, grow. We need to grow in our faith. Okay? We teach the five spiritual habits every Catholic needs in order to grow into becoming a true disciple of Jesus. And they are Daily time in God's Word. Daily time in God's Word. I teach that piece beginning next week. Prayer, talking with God. Maria in Sion teaches that. It's a wonderful job. And uh, participation in the sacramental life of the church, especially the Eucharist. And uh, Stacy Settlemeyer, our director of stewardship, hits it out of the park around tithing, giving back to God. And then fellowship, small groups, and join God's family. Then we move on to class 301. It is our ministry class titled Grow With Me. So we're doing it for the first time next Sunday. Discovering my ministry. The fourth purpose of the church is what? To serve. Remember the homily of two weeks ago. Every member huh, is a minister. And this is where that begins to happen. So the third class prepares people for a specific voluntary ministry in the church. We believe that every member of our church is a minister. 
God didn't intend for ministry to be done by just those with seminary degrees. He's called all of us. So class 301 is designed to help you what? To discover your shape for ministry. So I'll break that down for you real briefly. We look at spirit, we have a process. Okay, so you work in this class. We have a process. S stands for spiritual gifts. Only the baptized have spiritual gifts. If one is not baptized, they do not have spiritual gifts. Only the baptized have spiritual gifts. And we explain that. The gifts that are described in Scripture, given by God through the Holy Spirit. H, your heart. What's your passion? What do you love to do? Huh? What floats your boat? So we take a look at what you love. A, abilities. Okay, And sometimes abilities get confused with gifts. But abilities, everybody is blessed with natural talents given at birth. Given at birth. They're not spiritual gifts, but they're talents. Our personality, okay, I'm an introvert. You might not know that because I'm standing up here preaching, but I'm a high-end introvert. But we all have different, uh, we're all made up differently, so we take a look at our personality. And E, experience, our life experience. And then from that, we line you up with one of our shape guides to interview you, to talk about how you might serve your parish family, your church family. Class 401 is about a year out, uh, is our mission class. And in this class, uh, we're going to help you discover your life mission. And that is to proclaim the fifth purpose of the church, how you can give testimony. We are not just called to fellowship and grow and service within the body of Christ, we are also commissioned to bear fruit and share the hope of Christ and the love of God outside the church, everywhere. Go, go, and make disciples, huh? Discovering my life mission class is provided to help us prepare to be crisis ambassadors outside the church, trains how to prepare and give your testimony. I'm almost finished. Small groups. We want everyone to get into small groups. And in, we already have some small groups that are, that are up and, and running. Okay? And uh, in January, we're going to have like a, a, a small group launch. But the small group is a place where one meets with other Catholics for fellowship, spiritual growth, encouragement, and support in your Christian walk and accountability. To live God's purposes in my life, I need the personal and regular encouragement of a small group so that I can express the purposes through the church. God formed us for his family, the church, and no one is an island. And the challenge of the gospel to be a true disciple of Jesus is too difficult to do alone. No one can do it alone. I can believe and I can belong without a small group, but I cannot become a true disciple without a small group. I need a small group because living out true discipleship is just too difficult. We need support. So through this process of the five purposes, God's purposes, you know, as the head coach, like any head coach, they have a system, and they say to their players, trust the system, trust the system. If you trust the system, it will work, believe me. This is not my system, this is God's system. As the head coach, I'm asking you to trust God's purposes and vision for his church and to join me in this wonderful venture. So through this process, worship, connect, grow, serve, and proclaim, we begin to see the world like Jesus, think like Jesus, love like Jesus, and do the things that Jesus did while he was with us on the earth. So through this process, we are slowly transformed day by day and step by step into the image of Christ. 
Once again, through this process, we are slowly transformed. What did we hear in today's gospel? It was because of the hardness of your heart that Moses permitted divorce. That's the main message there. Because of the hardness of our hearts. And our hearts become soft when we are transformed day by day and step by step into the image of Christ. And so people of God, uh, this is this year's State of the Parish Address. And, uh, and please join me in this wonderful process of becoming true disciples of Jesus. Let us now stand and confess.